Hi, it's Anna Haferman. Today I'm going to show how to make this uh, bubble beanie in a two color tuck stitch pattern. This is a honeycomb pattern with little bees knitted in. Um, it's a fun pattern to do and we're going to do it on uh, the mid gauge LK150 or it can be done on the Brother KX350 as well. The yarn I'm using is the uh, Plymouth Select DK Merino Superwash, and this one is called Natural. This one is called Sunshine. I'll be using these little bee charms that I got on Amazon. They come with a variety of little bee shapes, and they'll be knit in using that little loop on the top. I'll put a link to where you can order these on Amazon. I'll start by pulling out every needle from 49 on the left to 49 on the right. And then I'm going to push back every fourth needle and e-wrap cast on the groups of three all the way across. So when I've done that I've got groups of three all the way across and then only a group of two on the end. So then I'll uh, leave myself a long tail of yarn uh, so that I can to sew up the hat at the end and then start uh, e-wrapping on um, all the needles I've pulled all, out all the way across. Now that I have my uh, all my needles e-wrapped, I'm going to reset my row counter to zero. I have my carriage on tension 3.5. I have my carriage set on normal, so that means the back levers are all the way to the back and the front levers are all the way forward. And this will that's the same on the KX350. Um, just set to normal and then I'll knit 30 rows. And this will be the brim of our hat and it will be this part here and then we'll hang this hem and then we'll start in our pattern. Once I knit a few rows, I'm going to hang my weights And then I'm going to go up to 30. Now I've got 30 rows knit and now I'm going to hang the hem. So I'll take the weights off. Now that I have the weights off, I'm going to hang the hem. And what I'll be doing is hanging the, in this bar of, uh, empty where the empty needle was I'll hang that last uh, little bar on the empty needle all the way across so that I have a folded hem and I will take from the very edge I'll take the first one and hang it on a needle with um, well, that already has a stitch on it otherwise I get kind of a weird little edge so I'll just start on this side, getting every one of those little bars and hang them on that empty stitch, pulling that empty stitch out so that I will have all my needles in work for my pattern. So what I'm doing, I'm just sticking the transfer tool in here and hanging it on the bar. And I show this also in the uh, the first bubble beanie hat pattern that I made, and it, this is the exact same hem. So these are pretty easy to pick up since they're such big loops. But it's very, and there's only, uh, you're only doing every fourth one, so it goes pretty quickly. And then grab that last one and put it on the stitch, the last stitch that has, already has a stitch on it. And now you'll want to rehang your weights. Now I've got, um, I'm ready to start 
in my pattern. So what I've done now is hung the hem of the hat. So that's where these stitches are. So what I'm doing now is this next row that's gonna be two rows of white and it I will tuck these needles every eighth stitch across. So now I'm ready to do my um, pattern. And my first two rows are going to be with the white yarn. So I'm gonna park the yellow yarn and thread the white yarn. And I'm going to reset my carriage. I'm gonna take this off so you can see it. Um, so how I've got it set. I'm gonna put it into hold, which means I push these two levers forward. Um, and that's the same on the Brother KX 350. So these two go back on the uh, LK150, it's marked one and two, and on the KX 350, it's H and N. Um, so I'm just showing you this off the bed so that you can see it, because I can't get everything in camera. I'm changing my tension to 5.5 and then I'm resetting my row counter to zero. So I'm ready with my yarn and now I just have to pull out my pattern. Now I've drawn out the pattern so you can see it. Uh, this is a, this pattern is based on a groups of eight stitches and 24 rows. So our first needle, our first row, we're going to pull every uh, fifth and then every eighth after that stitch um, and tuck two rows. So uh, I have set up my bed in groups of eight and then with a stitch on each side for seaming. So going off the pattern, I count in one, two, three, four, five, not counting that first needle. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I have um, eight, uh, seven stitches between each uh, next one and then seven. So then I'll pull it out. So I've got the first one pulled and I'll count three, four, five, six, seven, pull the eighth one, three, four, five, six, seven, pull the eighth, and go all the way across like that until I've got them all pulled. Now I've got every um, eighth needle pulled after this initial fifth one. And um, what I'm gonna do is mark my needle bed because I'll be working off this first stitch when I'm pulling the next rows as a I'm gonna be using this as a reference point. So I'm gonna mark the bed with a, um, a washable Crayola marker. Um, these are great for marking the needle bed because they wash off with a damp paper towel. So I will go right here and mark each needle that I've pulled in a straight line right above the needle channel. And this will help me to pull the pattern for subsequent rows, so I don't have to count as much. This will make it a lot easier for me. And try to get an accurately in front of that needle channel so that you can see which one you need to pull out each time. So we'll be, I'll mark this one, and then for each subsequent row, I'll know that these are on the other side of that one. So I've got my carriage ready to go, and I'm going to knit two rows in white, and they will tuck, uh, because I've got my carriage in hold, I'll be tucking these first two stitch, these stitches that are pulled, uh, needles that are pulled, so. Now, for my next two rows, I'm gonna go back and look at my pattern again. And the needles I need pulled are on the other side of these. So um, I want these needles to knit 
and then I want the next one, the ones I pull out to tuck. But, so the first thing I want to do is get ready because I'll be going with the yellow yarn. So I'm going to unthread my white and park it on the side. And I showed that in the, um, I think the slouchy beanie, I showed how to do that. So get your yellow yarn ready because we're gonna switch. We're gonna go two rows white, two rows yellow, two rows white, two rows yellow, and that'll make our pattern. But we will also have to push our needles that are in hold or, uh, yeah, needles that are in hold. We'll push those back to upper working position, and then we're going to pull out the next needles on each side. So these will be the ones we pull out now. So anything that's in uh, working position or upping, upper working position is going to knit on the next pass, but everything we pull out to hold will tuck. So we'll do every two on each side of those because I want these to tuck this time. So I've got those ready to go and then I'll knit two rows of the um, yellow yarn. So. So now I've got uh, the first row of white done and they tucked right there. And then I've uh, the first two rows of white and then they tucked, you can kind of see them. And then I'm doing two rows of yellow and that will tuck this time, or it did. Now the next part of the pattern is the groups of three. So the first thing I want to do to get ready for my next uh, two rows, which are going to be yellow now, so I've done the two rows of white were one and two, then two rows of yellow, which were three and four, two rows of white now, I think I misspoke. So I'm going to thread the white yarn first and just be ready with that, the right color yarn threaded in my carriage. So I've got the white, I'm going to thread the white and make sure it's ready to go. Make sure it's in the slot, ready to go, and you have the proper amount of tension on it, so you're ready. Now, with the pattern, the next ones I'm gonna pull out are these groups of three on either side of the groups of two here. So, first I'll push my needles that are pulled back to upper working position so they knit on the next row, and then I want the groups of three to tuck. So I'll pull out three on each side. And this is pretty easy to do once you uh, learn the pattern. You can just grab them with your fingers uh, or your fingernails. And so we've got the groups of three. And then we're going to do uh, rows five and six in white now. So at each, every two rows, we switch to the next color. So two rows of white. And then I'll unthread the white, get the yellow threaded up. For my next pass, make sure I've got good tension. And then in my pattern, the next two rows, so I'm on row six here, which means we're starting to do row seven. So now we've get, we had those three pulled and now we'll do the twos. So push back, push back the groups of three. And pull out the groups of two. And this is why we marked 
the uh, initial marks. It's so we can pivot off of that reference point. And we know that that's, that was our first needle. So we can't, obviously can't mark them all because then you wouldn't be able to tell anything. So you just mark that reference point and it'll be good. So we'll do two rows of yellow. seven and eight, and then we will do the white, get the white threaded. I like to get the yarn threaded so I'm ready to go for my next group of stitches. Uh, next ones, we had the groups of two, and then we're on nine, and we'll be on nine and 10, so this will just be a group of one. Now this pattern is from one of the old brothers stitch books and um, it's cool to me how they um, you're tucking but it makes this design so the back of the tuck stitch looks like like this whereas and then this is these in between areas make the pattern and uh, this is where it's tucking in here so it's actually it's kind of cool and it gives you this kind of bubbly effect you could also um, steam this out if you wanted it to lie flat um, but it's it's a neat little honeycomb thing so we are pulling out we're still pulling out our our group of one stitch And we've got the, rig, the right color yarn threaded, which is the white. And we're going to do two rows. So now we've finished row 10. And if you see here, rows 11 and 12 don't have any stitches tucked. So we'll switch back to the yellow yarn. For those la for that last group, and um, they so I'll push those back, and I don't have to pull any out this time, and I'll just knit two rows in the yellow. So one. So now you see I'm on row 12 and um, I've finished my first group of stitches. So the next ones I'm gonna do is the same sort of diamond shape with the ones, then twos, then threes, but it's offset. So, and this makes up the honeycomb because they're sort of uh, offset from each other. So you've got, this is our first row that we just did. Now we're gonna do this row. So the needles we pull are going to be the uh, needles that are immediately in between the purple ones. So first we'll get first get the yarn the yarn in place so it's ready to go once we've done our maneuvers. I'm gonna pull up my weight and uh, I've got the white yarn threaded. Okay, so. The way this works is uh, on either, in between each purple one, there are seven needles, and I want the uh, middle of those seven, so three on each side and one in the middle. So if we're counting from the beginning of our pattern, our first purple was here, so three, and then there'll be that the first needle in our pattern is this one, because remember we had one for seaming. So we'll do pull that and then count seven in between, just like we did here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and then pull each needle after that. So let's see. And I'll be back when I pull them. So I'm pulling every every eighth needle. So I've got each one in between the purples and then seven here. So I'm pulling and then pulling a needle and then counting seven, two, four, six, seven, and then pulling the eighth needle. Now when we get here, uh, we've got two, four, six, uh, two, four, six, seven, and then we would be pulling this eighth needle. However, that's our seaming needle, so we don't want to pull it. Uh, so we're going to leave it where it is, and then we're going to mark all the needles that we pulled in red. You guessed it, and for these needles. Now, even though I didn't pull that first needle, I am going to mark it because it is going to be a reference point. So that needle would be uh, a seaming needle, so I'm not going to ever have it tucking but I do want to know where it is so that when I'm doing the needles around this pattern, I'll know what I'm, which I need to pull. So I'm going to mark each of these with my red magic marker. And make sure your markers are washable. Otherwise, you won't be able to get them off the needle bed. And that won't be good. So the Crayola ones are really nice. They, uh, there's a generic brand. The Crayola seem to work better and they're fairly inexpensive so treat yourself to some nice Crayola markers make sure I get that right one and so I just mark right along there with the channel with the channel so I can see exactly where I'm going and um, so now we are on row 13 and 14 here so I've got my white threaded up and I'm going to do rows 13 and 14. Now I'll change yarn and we're just going to do this exactly the same way as we did the purple rows, but because the edge needles are a little different. I'm going to show you how that works. So I've got the yellow yarn threaded. Now our next needle, so imagine on the pattern it looks like this, but it is continuous. So this is how it is. So we've got these two pulled, then we're going to push those back and pull out the ones on each side, just like we did. So we're pushing them back to upper working position and then we'll pull out the needles on each side of it. And that's easy, just like we did with the purple, but when we get to the end needles, it's a little different. So I have pulled out the two on that side. Now on this one, I would, um, because that's a seaming one, it's gonna stay where it is. I'm just gonna pull out the one on that side. And over here, even though I hadn't pulled that one, I got it marked, so I'm gonna pull out the one on the other side. So these uh, groups that make up the tucking, if you look, there's three like that, and if you imagine that this connects with this, you've got one, two, three. So then we'll do two rows. Uh, we should be on rows 15 and 16. We'll do two rows there. And then we'll switch to white again. And then we'll do, we're doing the same thing. We're just taking into account the edge needles. Uh, so we're on, we did 16. So we're going to be on uh, rows 17 and 18. So that's the threes. Uh, the groups of three. So we pull out each group of three, just like we did. And the, um, on the end, we are just compensating for, if you look here, you've got the red needle is pulled and then the one on that side, but this one stays where it is and that one is over here, so 
We're just trying to make the pattern continuous because we'll be seaming it up the side and we want it to seam nicely. So here, the red needle would be the one in pattern, but we're gonna leave it where it is because it's a seaming needle and then pull that out. And when I say it's a seaming needle, I've got this seam here where I've sewed it up with mattress stitch. And then here's what the seam looks like. And I want it to be as close to invisible as possible. And it's, it comes out pretty good. You have to be, uh, it's, it doesn't always work exactly perfect, but it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. So then I'll do, I've got my white ready. I'm going to do 17 and 18. And then I'm going to continue in pattern until I get to row 24. So now it's time to put a B on the hat. And as you see here, these are knit in. So this is a kind of fun thing to do. And then you don't have to weave in any tails. This one I actually added on sewing it on the end and then I had to weave in the tail so they both work um, the knitting in if you have what I used is um, a double-eyed transfer tool and a crochet hook this is a number eight uh, it's very small it needs to be small enough to fit through the eye of this uh, little loop on the bee charm. So um, other sizes may work. This is just the one I had handy. So to do that, I'm gonna put this bee on needle 13 on the right. So first I want to take that stitch off the, um, I'm gonna take the transfer tool and take that stitch off of the needle. So the stitch is now on the transfer tool. Then I just turn it a quarter turn and then I'm gonna just sort of tuck it like that. And that way it stays in place because I'm gonna need both of my hands for to get that B in there. Now the B needs to be facing, I want it on top of the right, the knitting on the right side. So I need it facing away from me. So what I wanna do is get the little eye of the B in there but on the other side so I'm gonna put it in there and try to get the little hole right there then I'm gonna take my crochet hook and stick it right there and it'll just kind of balance right there while you're doing your other thing so you'll take your um, transfer tool carefully turn it so the stitch is facing how it was originally and then take your crochet hook and get it into the stitch. So now you've got both the B and the uh, stitch on the crochet hook. Now you want to pull the stitch through the little eye of the B. So pull down on the knitting so that you get some resistance and it comes right through. Then take your transfer tool again, and you've got the stitch on the transfer tool. And now get it back on the needle. And that's how you sew the bee, how you knit the bee in. Um, the next, well, I'm going to continue in my pattern. I'm on row 22 now. So here's my uh, last pass with uh, in my group of 24. I've got the yellow threaded, and I'm going to do my... I've got these needles pushed back, and these are the uh, two rows with no needles selected. So now I'm right here. Uh, I've done 24, and then I'm just going to start at the beginning. So I'm going to do um, up to row 60, which would be... Uh, five groups of these. So it, of this, it's two and a half groups, so it's five. I'll do 
one purple, one red, one purple, one red, one purple. And then I'll finish the hat. So I have uh, finished my two and a half repeats. So I've got five rows of bubbles. So this was a purple row, a red row, purple, red, purple. I'm on row 60. I put my bees on uh, row 22, needle 13 on the right, then row 42, needle 12 on the left, and on row 58, needle uh, 31 on the left. You can put them on any needles you want. Um, I like to just sort of graduate them a little. Now I've cut my white yarn. So you now will be transferring every stitch to its neighbor. So we're decreasing for the top of the hat. So we'll just go ahead and decrease every stitch, uh, each stitch, the first one to the second, then the third to the fourth, the fifth to the sixth, and so on all the way across the bed. So I have transferred every stitch to its neighbor across. So I have two stitches and an empty needle, two stitches, empty needle. And so I don't want these in between needles to knit. So I'm gonna push those, the ones with no stitches on them all the way to the back. And then to make it easier to knit off, I'm going to uh, bring these stitches with two stitch uh, needles with two stitches on them forward and I'm going to take my carriage off hold so my carriage was on hold with the needles the levers facing backwards I'm going to push those uh, to number two on the LK 150 on the uh, brother KX 350 I think it's marked N uh, but it's the forward position I've cut my white yarn, so that's out of the way. And now I'm gonna go down and stitch size to three and a half, and I'm gonna knit four rows for the uh, top of the hat. And my yellow yarn is, um, I've only got a little left, but I'm not gonna run out. I've done the pattern before. I'm just gonna stick it in here so it doesn't fly off the table. Okay. So now all I've got to do is um, cut the yellow yarn and you can see I have a tiny bit left. I'm going to cut the yellow yarn and then thread. Uh, I'm going to sew these stitches off so I can cinch up the top of the hat. So all I'm doing is threading my transfer tool. You can use a darning needle uh, if you prefer. And then I'm just going to sew these stitches off onto the thread so that um, I've got a stitch on. So I've got all of them sewn off. And then I will remove it from the bed once I'm done. So do it like that. When it comes off the machine, it looks like this. Um, there's our bees, and the top will cinch together. Here's the inside, and you see it has a lot of nice texture. So I'll take the uh, yarn tail that I started with and sew along here, matching it. I'll sew starting from the inside along this seam here, and then go here, and then all the way up matching the whites and the yellows and then I'll cinch up the top and uh, pull it in and then tie it together. All the way upside. So you, when you're done seaming up the side, take the seam that you seamed with and put that in towards the middle of the hat. Then take the um, gathering string and just pull that, gather it. So you get a nice circle on top, and then we'll sew that together and make it look neat. So then just take 
this and start weaving in and close up the top. Cinch it up really nice. And then secure this so that um, so that it makes a nice um, edge. Then just weave in and out to secure the top and make it look as neat as you can. So then put the needle through the center, bring it to the middle, and then you've got the two ends inside and you can tie those together. And then weave all your tails in and you have a nice hat. So here's the hat. I ended up sewing an extra bee onto the front. You could have knit that one in at the beginning. You could also have sewn, knit, uh, sewn in any of these bees. And if you like my uh, videos, please click like and subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll be notified next time I put up a new project. Thank you.